Well, since I compared these remakes to the Star Wars remakes a few weeks ago, I figured I should review at least one of them and see if there was any huge differences, and I did find at least one. In the Pixel Perfect remake, the monk punches first. Also, in the original iOS version, he kind of looks like he got rejected by the Frieza Force. Nice shoulder pads and armor there, pal, but your power level's still below 9,000. At least until you reach Master, and then you go all the way to Super Saiyan. Yeah, I saw what you did there, Square. You should save your uh, Dragon Ball references for the Dragon Quest series where they belong. Greetings, everybody. My name is Tommy the Game Master, and welcome to my channel. And all kidding aside, what do I think of this Pixel Perfect remaster of the game? Well, it's not the best remake of the original Final Fantasy ever. In fact, I consider the PSP older versions on iOS that I made sure to pick up before being delisted as better versions of this game. But at the same time, I consider this one of the most interesting remakes of the game. With my biggest complaint still being... Why did you pull down the older versions off the App Store Square Enix? There are some big differences in the versions. Some that will piss off hardcore players of Final Fantasy 1, like no difficulty settings and the game is stuck on easy mode. And while a lot of these can be fixed with patches, I hope, not all of them can. You can't just restore missing content with simple patch upgrades. And yes, the extra dungeons are now gone too. Oh, I should also mention another con I found out. You will probably see a window bar that says Final Fantasy on top of the screen for most of the videos. There's a reason for that. I have seen papers going through a paper shredder come out less torn than the screen when I try to play it on 100%. The screen tearing is god awful. Playing it in a big window isn't hard to set up and greatly reduces that screen tearing, but whenever I tried to do 100% full screen, the whole screen would shimmer like a freaking diamond mine every time I tried to move my character in the overworld. Patches should be coming quick for this Square Enix. Oh, and yeah, even though the game is set to easy, one of the best tricks in the original Final Fantasy to get to high levels and have decent money early on is the Peninsula of Power, and that's no longer there. Yeah, prepare to grind more despite this having an easier difficulty setting. I just don't understand why you patched out one of the best things in the original Final Fantasy Square. But we do get a lot of good things in this remake. First, if you like some of the original NES character designs, you're really going to love this. The game's new graphics stick to the NES sprites more faithfully, hence the pixel perfect. You can definitely tell when you evolve your characters these are the original character upgrades, as the black and white wizards look radically different than their other remake counterparts. But while the character and enemy sprites take a lot of pages from the NES's original design, rather than trying to redo them or reimagine them as something new, the town sprites and a lot of the supporting cast, though, take their cues more off the PS1 or PSP remakes of the game. And then some of the effects, like the water effects, are really good. It's like it's a brand new game. It's an interesting blend of both new and old looks. And if you're going, why go back to the original game when it comes to the original character designs instead of stick with these new character arts and sprites because these on the screenshots I'm showing you look perfectly fine, don't they? My answer, when it comes to the original Final Fantasy, you're right. There wasn't a need to do this. It looks really good. The people who did a lot of these Final Fantasy 1 remakes really took their time to really upgrade the art from the NES. The reason why these Pixel Perfect remakes are existing it comes probably from the complaints of 5 and 6, where there is a big need to redo these remakes because the character designs suck and look like the someone was high when they decided to draw them this way. They look god-awful and don't really fit their games. Anyways, going back to point, 
there's also a few new Ease of Life updates in the Pixel Perfect remakes too. The fact your character can now walk diagonally and there are even full maps of the dungeons making it a bit easier to go for 100%. But I did enjoy having them along to avoid getting lost in some of the earlier dungeons before you can teleport out. Yes, it makes the dungeons easier, but I prefer easier than making life unnecessarily hard. And then, finally, there's the music. Bringing back Nobu Uematsu to remix these tracks and give us more varied tracks was a genius move. The original Final Fantasy never sounded better than these pixel perfect remasters. Well, since I talked a lot about the game's graphics and music, let's do the usual discussion of story and gameplay. Oh, before we begin, I do want to talk about this version here. Yeah, this version, the one that you see on the screen, this is the actual NES version. And it's the only time you will hear me talk about this version on this channel unless I actually do an NES Classic review. Why? Because this version of the game here is a gallon of milk that's been put on a really hot steamy boiler and then made to fester for 30 years. It's a turd and hasn't aged well. Yeah, when I hear pro Jared or some call me Johnny who insist on reviewing this with a few lines that the remakes are easier to get into, I kind of get furious. No, you can say that about the Dragon Quest and Dragon Warrior games where the remakes are easier and better than the original, but the original is still playable. This game here is bull doo doo and shame on Square Enix and Nintendo for putting it on the NES Classic instead of Dragon Warrior. Old age isn't the problem. The problem is that half the game is broken and it's not any ease of use to it at all. Stats can be broken. The game is not balanced well. It's clumsy and it's just not fun. Don't play this version of Final Fantasy 1. If your first attempt at playing this game was on the NES Classic, then the Pixel Perfect games are way better than this. Now that I am done talking about this piece of dung, let's talk about what happens when you take away everything that would piss a normal gamer off, and what are we left with? It's a charming, if a bit old, JRPG that is extremely open in replayability and how you approach everything. It truly is a unique game that is incredibly fun to play. Once you get a version of it that was not made by people who had no experience in making this type of game yet, and developers that were probably on a super low budget and a time crunch to get it out the door before the company closed their doors permanently and went out of business. Play a version that had time and some finesse, Final Fantasy 1 is actually a great game. Well, the story starts off simply enough. The four elements are out of whack and the people are suffering, but they believe in a legend that will right this wrong. The legend of the four light warriors, each clasping a crystal in their hand, will find a way to set the four elements right. And yeah, that's the basic gifts of the story. You start off in the kingdom of Corneria and have to stop a dark knight named Garland who kidnapped the princess and he's probably one of the most easiest trans JRPG bosses ever. Then there's a lot of other bullcrap involving stopping some pirates and saving an elf prince and then blowing up a good chunk of land so you can finally get to the earth crystal. And then from there the game for the most part is actually straightforward. Getting to and activating the crystals does revolve a lot of busy work. But once you start doing it it's actually pretty easy and the rest of the game goes by pretty fast. Go into the dungeons and find your way to the lowest levels and defeat a fiend and restore a large crystal afterwards to restore the balance to that force. But this straightforward story decides to jump a very big shark towards the end of the game. Yeah, for those who want to accuse the idea of over-the-top pretentiousness and convoluted storylines, and the abuse of the words of dark, light, and heart to the modern Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts game, I got some news for you. It started here. 
I'm not joking, the ending monologue feels more at home in a modern Final Fantasy game than any other classic stories, and it's just full of bullcrap. But basically, you know that Garland guy you beat so early in the game? Rather than dying, he somehow went back in time and sent the four fiends who disturbed the crystals into the future, and they sent him back into the past so he can send them into the future, so they can send him into the past, and you can see why this alone would give me a major headache. But the whole monologue of the ending that happens after you beat him takes it to an hysterical level. Let's see here, with lines like this whole adventure never happened, and things like the crystals exist in your heart. Someone was high when they wrote this. I don't know how high, but my guess is pretty close to sky high. All jokes aside, it's a serviceable story for an old school JRPG. By keeping it simple though, they left open for one of the best gameplay elements. Since none of our heroes has a personality or backstory of any sort, in fact, one of the old sages say that you were created and summoned due to the time loop existing, I mean the games let you create your own heroes and your own team, leading to a lot of possibilities. Let's talk about the gameplay. The best thing about the game opens up right at the start. You get to choose four characters from six classes and there is no rule about selecting a multiple of each class. Want a game where all your characters are fighters or monks? You can do that. What about mages? You can do that. Granted, not advisable for beginners. I'll try to make a video on my quick tip channel about my thoughts on each class. But if you want my advice, you're pretty much good as long as you don't have a thief. And make sure you have a white and black mage in your party for artillery purposes. After that, it's your standard 8-bit fair, random battles every few steps, and I mean that literally sometimes. While not the highest enemy encounter rate I have experienced in a JRPG, it is a distant second to the Inuyasha game that came out on the original DS. And that title, by the way, is probably the worst JRPG I have ever beat. That is until I played the two Sword Art Online games earlier this year. But back to Final Fantasy, you do battle constantly, so here's basically how battles go. You select a move for each of your characters, and then watch the battle play out. After everyone has had their turn, all the monsters or your characters are dead, you select again, and you continue until all the monsters are dead. Then collect some gold and some EXP, and move on. One of the things I do love about the Pixel Perfect is that when you level up, Rather than this long chain of level up like past versions, you get the screen that explains your stats a whole lot better, as well as EXP breakdown after a battle. At any rate, you need money to buy equipment and spells, of course. Spells in this one go into spots, and you can only have so many in each slot, and use it before you have to refill them by resting at the end. This is different than the MP that would later be used in Final Fantasy, and a lot of the Final Fantasy remakes actually use the MP. I personally like the MP, it's a little bit more freer. But if you do like a little strategy, knowing that you can only cast one of these three spells a certain amount of time before you completely run out. Anyways, after spells, each class of course has their own equipment, with Fighter and Thieves and their evolutions having the most equipment available. Fighter, though, is the best out of all of them, and usually the one a lot of people pick for hit the uh, starting character, because he is the tank of the group. If you're wondering about Monk, he's better off lightly clothed to fully naked if you want to bring out his true power. No, I'm not kidding, this character is a glass cannon, but if you can avoid making sure he gets hit too much, he brings down most enemies before they have a chance to really hurt him. He is that powerful. Still, there is a lot of equipment with this, and it's a lot of fun just figuring out what characters you can equip to what. And I've always loved playing through the game, provided it's remaked without all the broken bullcrap that the original NES version had. That said, the newer versions, and again, this version, can be easy. One of the ways is that a lot of the weapons that can be used have 
uses items as well, like free fire rods or free heals, by using said weapon as an item, like the heal staff. And there are three of these healing items, so you don't really need to use a lot of the white mage magic when you can just use healing staffs and healing helmets to help in heal your party each turn. You can also get things for level 2 Thundera, making it a bit easy to go through some of the later dungeons. If the idea was these were slogs and you had to really pay attention to uh, your magic, these items kind of just break that. A few caps on these items in battle would have been a good thing, like maybe once per battle you can use one of these items, but as they are, they are very much game breaking, and it does make the game a lot easier. As far as dungeon designs go, they're pretty good. To one of the things that Pixel Perfect has going for it is definitely going to thrill people who are new to the game, piss off some of the older players, is the fact that each dungeon level does come with a pretty good map. I've already kind of mentioned this, but it makes it easy to avoid traps where I can see them all. But still, getting through these dungeons are pretty fun, and the way they are made are pretty good, at least for their times. This is a game made in the late 80s. My only complaint is that the first two you encounter, you have to go through them twice. No, I'm not joking here. The first real dungeon, this marsh dungeon, you have to go through twice. One, to retrieve a crown that will lead you to eventually getting a key, and then go back to open the rest of the doors to get some pretty rare equipment you need to move on. I should mention, this game does have a few side quests that I like. One of them is that the characters can evolve by doing a side quest for Bahamut. It's optional, but it's worth that the mages get access to a lot more high tier magic. Your physical characters now become super powered. And while I do enjoy the other remakes designed, I love this pixel perfect remake because your characters now look bigger and older looking after receiving this upgrade. Don't get me wrong, the other remade versions are good too, with extra capes and details, but here it feels like my characters grew up and are now able to go out and kick some major evil booty. And finally, one last thing that I need to talk about the game, it kind of annoyed me. You do get an airship, you have access to the rest of the world, right? Yeah, kind of. The game loves to make you think you got a Lamborghini only to find out that you have to park it at the very back end of the parking lots wherever you go. So far you can't even see the store you're going to. To get some of the final dungeons, expect to play, find a place to park the airship, and then walk a long way to get to the um, village or the dungeons. It's a pain and makes experiencing the first time an airship was introduced into a JRPG a whole lot less epic and a bit more tedious than it should be. So in the end, did I enjoy my time with Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster? I'll admit, yeah, it's not bad and I like the idea regardless of where you slice it. It's kind of hard to go back and redo this one and do it good. No one hates the way the other remakes were and the way they were balanced. They hate 5 and 6 in the way they turned out, especially on looks. But no one really hates the original. All the original remakes have been pretty good for their time. On top of that, there is difficulty rebalancing. And an update like that should be able to fix it to where you could change your difficulty. For those of us who do want a slightly harder version of the game. Maybe not broken as crap like the NES version. But something that is a quite a bit more challenging than this. And of course... Let it toggle if you want characters to auto-select an uh, enemy if a first character defeats an enemy. Have it miss if the second character selected the same enemy. A lot of fans of the NES version do enjoy that. I personally prefer having the auto-select, but I can understand why they enjoy the challenge that this provides. That said... Defending the rest of the things that are wrong with the NES version is wrong. Anyone who says the NES Final Fantasy is a masterpiece is either insane or lying to you. Anyways, I have said this was George Lucasing themselves with this um, takedown of the older versions of Final Fantasy and putting up this pre Pixel Perfect, and I'm going to say, yeah, I think they George Lucas them here. 
I like the new music and some of the ease of life upgrades, but no extra dungeons and everything stuck on easy. Yeah, I have to say, if you're gaming on iOS and didn't pick up the originals before the Pixel Perfect went up, you lost yourself some superior versions here. While the extra dungeons aren't the best, they do add some extra side content to a very simple and short RPG, and a few of the cutscenes are just cut out of the game. Bottom line, own one of the remakes of Final Fantasy 1 and thought it was okay, but not the best and don't know if you should spend money on another version? The answer to that is no, but if SE ever releases the soundtrack to this, definitely pick it up. If you've never played Final Fantasy or are a super hardcore fan of the original Final Fantasy who has to have every version, there's enough here to entertain you. This is Tommy the Game Master thanking you for um, listening to this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Please like this video. I hope to see you guys soon.